Hey y'all, in today's quick tip, I'm going to show you a couple ways to remove internal componentry. Whether you're working with someone else's model with far too much detail, or if you're trying to protect your intellectual property, consider using these methods. Starting with the simplest example, and a pretty simple model to boot. Here we have a cubic design, an FDM printer, and maybe we just want the external faces to see how it will fit in relation to the pile of junk usually found on my desk. In this case, I'll take advantage of this simple geometry and use a special selection tool, Select by Boundary, which I'll find from my S key shortcut. Using this, you can use boundary shapes such as boxes, cylinders, or spheres to select geometry within an area, or outside of that area. From there, I'll just need to use the build plate to help define the centroid, and start adjusting the boundary to my liking. An important option to note is the intersection one, which means that the boundary doesn't need to fully encompass the parts, and instead, it just needs to touch any portion. A couple of quick adjustments later, and it's got everything I want it to. I'll click OK to then select those parts, and delete on my keyboard to remove them. In this case, the design is not in history capturing mode, so I'm able to do so easily. In the next example, I have a rotary tool with an extensive history and list of components. A little more daunting, but still manageable. If you're looking to preserve IP or remove details, the history can add an unnecessary roadblock. So the first thing I'll do in this case is remove the design history. This is not something you can simply undo later, so please heed the warning provided. Even after doing so, you'll find a number of features that were recognized and now found in the browser. With my end goal in mind, this only acts to clutter things, so I'll go to remove them all by selecting, then using the dissolve option. Now, another benefit of turning off history is the ability to organize the components in subassemblies. In this case, I want to throw all the components into the same subassembly, so I'll create a catch all, select every other component, and simply drag and drop. Now for another selection trick that could help with this sort of process. This time I'll find the selection tool from the toolbar and use the select by size option. This is a little simpler than the last time and I can use the slider to adjust the selection. I'll find that using this tool typically gets all those internals. Again, after you're done, hit OK and don't forget to hit delete before clearing the selection. Further to that, more detail can be wiped by exporting to a generic 3D file type, such as STEP or IGES. Finally, in this last case, I have that V12 engine you might recall from the past update video. This is a beautiful working design, but it presents another problem, externally linked parts. Breaking those could be a major hassle, but that just gives me another opportunity to show you another way of doing this. Before I do so, I wanna change the visual style to shaded, which cuts down on system resources significantly. Next, I'll jump into the simulation workspace, and if you've worked here often, you probably already have an idea of where I'm going with this. I'll make any old study and immediately jump into the simplification workspace. From there, I'll turn on selection priority to get the components upon selection and move forward with selecting just interfacing parts and external bits, things like pulleys, the block, and the oil pan. With all those selected, I'll right click to find remove all but selected which will get rid of everything else. Further to that, I can use remove features to get rid of details and replace with primitives if every pulley groove isn't needed. When all's done, I'll export the simplified model to a new design. Great solution. Thanks to Mike and Phil for your suggestions. If you have other ways of doing this, share in the comments below.